Hey guys, it's the March guy, and today's video is going to be all about achieving high grades for this school year. You might be seeing a lot of blog posts and videos about achieving high grades, so I can guarantee you that this might be 100% effective for all of you. So before watching this video, a little disclaimer. You can only have high grades if you have the determination and the will to have high grades. If you want to slack off the school year and rely on your friends or your seatmates or classmates, then I suggest that you stop this video immediately. We have to remember that having high grades isn't just about being happy-go-lucky type of person, okay? So yeah, so let's get started. Step number one, don't let other people brainwash you about the school year. You guys, you know it's not uncommon for people to be brainwashing you about the school year. You got people telling you that grade 9 is going to be harder than grade 10 and grade 8 being the hardest amongst all levels. So as a student who hasn't entered the school year yet, you're gonna suffer a lot of emotional trauma and fear because you're gonna think that you're not going to be prepared for these kind of stuff. Now what's important is that you should never listen to other people no matter what they say. It doesn't mean that most of them experience the same thing. It means you have to experience the same thing, right? When people say a certain subject is going to be hard, don't believe them. If a lot of them say that this kind of teacher is going to be a terror teacher or this teacher is going to be good, don't believe them. It's important that you have an optimistic mindset because once you allow yourself to believe in them, you're programming your mind to actually believe that the subject's going to be hard. The more you think how complex math is going to be or, or how deep the Filipino vocabulary you're gonna have to learn will drag not only your self-esteem but also your grades. Imagine having an anxiety attack almost every day because of wondering what tomorrow's topic is going to be. So what you have to do is to be ready. That's it. Don't mind other people and focus on your path, not theirs. So step number two is you need to know the grading system of your subject. Sometimes it's impossible to study everything, especially if your week is jam-packed with quizzes, activities, and performance tasks. Unless, of course, you're really, I mean really, really smart, hardworking, and diligent, I suggest you skip this part. I know every one of you, including me, has experienced a day or a week where we simply don't know what to do first because all our plates are already full. Most of the time, we cram, we panic, we do all-nighters and regret that we even crammed in the first place. This cycle is very common, especially to teenagers and students nowadays. So guys, this is where priorities kick in. By knowing the grading system of each subject, you know where to give the most effort and the least effort to. So for example, I have 5 long quizzes due tomorrow and most possibly I crammed. I know I can't study all of these subjects, so what I'm going to do is I'll study more on the subject with the highest percentage on quizzes. So let's say quizzes on subject 1 comprises 35% of the total grade and subject 2, 3, 4, 5 comprises 25%, 15%, 15%, and 10% of the total grade. Surely, I would prioritize subject 1 over all subjects because it has greater weight, right? So yeah, by doing this, we can leave time for our friends and prioritize other stuff. Step number three, learn in class. Sometimes in class, when we find a teacher boring and the subject even more boring, we tend to convince ourselves to not listen and sleep and just study the lessons at home. I've done this and I know you've done this as well, but newsflash guys, it's becoming a bad habit. We should always try or at least force ourselves to listen in class. So when we decide to go home and study again, there is what I call double learning because the lessons get reinforced better. Thus, your ability to learn it faster. Tip number four, plan the subject coverage for the entire season. Guys, I wish I knew this earlier because I was out of the class most of the time because of extracurricular activities. I suggest that you ask your subject teachers to coverage for their exam even before the exam starts. So for example, you're going to have an exam on July 30 and today is June 15. A usual student would wait for his or her teacher to discuss the lessons, right? So imagine one week before the exams and your teacher will still be discussing a lot of lessons the week before. So the tendency is, you're going to study a lot of stuff over the weekend prior to the exams. And we wouldn't want that, right? But if you've already planned everything, you could do advanced reading. So when the exam comes, all you have to do now is to review. The best part about this is that you can do a lot of non-school stuff while your classmates are busy cramming. You have to know guys that school isn't just about memorizing stuff on a short term span. It's about memorizing and familiarizing stuff wholeheartedly. So in any situation, you can just grab the information you want. Because when that happens, 
you know what you did was learning. Step number five, always set aside time to let loose. Guys, it's important to set aside time to not study so somehow you can refresh your brain. As for me, I do triathlon so I can relieve stress and feel confident about myself. At least by this way, I can forget all my academic priorities and have fun. Studies show that by increasing endorphin levels or our happy hormones, brain performance will improve. Personally, I have more time doing non-academic stuff. Academics should be a natural flow in life and should not be forced. Every day, just do up to 4 hours of studying and the rest, just chill. College will be a lot tougher. So if you spend your whole high school life studying, then you'll be burnt out. Now is the time to take it easy on yourself. But remember, do not slack. Step number six, eat healthy. I remember one time when we did camping and I ate a horrible breakfast and I swear, my mood changed and my energy levels literally dropped. Imagine eating that bad food on a quiz day, an exam day, or a hell week and you're not in tip-top shape, right? Who knows what could happen. Step number seven, never be afraid to ask why you were wrong. But at the same time, never be too proud to deny a mistake. It really helps for self-improvement so next time you know what to do when things go wrong. I know that a lot of students are shy and intimidated of their teachers, especially when they have to ask something or inquire about something in front of class. Guys, you can always ask the teacher privately and in that way you can even have more time with the teacher and clarify stuff. That helps, I swear. Number eight, share with your friends and vice versa. Always be welcome when friends ask for your help. By this way, you can help solve their problems. And at the same time, you also get to learn stuff and review lessons. It's simply mutualism, guys. Also, don't be afraid to ask if you doubt about something. Discuss something to each other properly and contribute to each other's knowledge. That's why it's important to choose your friends wisely because your friends will have a great impact not only on your academics, but also in your life. Number nine, make a reminder list. When a week is filled with a lot of activities and requirements, I make a reminder list so I I wouldn't forget any activity or project. I always do this every time because I think I have short-term memory. It really is helpful. It helps me sort my priorities and organize things properly. Step number 10 and the most important step amongst all of them, it's always important to lean on someone. When we lean on someone, we have a reason and urge to wake up very early every morning for school. We have some kind of motivation to go through the school year with flying colors despite all the conflicts and challenges. Make these people your inspiration and focus on the goal. That's the most important thing. But sometimes guys, it's not about the high grades and it's just about enjoying the process and sticking to the goal. High grades are just a product. So those are 10 tips I can give to you guys for having high grades and I hope they'll work out for you because it really did work out for me. You have to remember that high grades aren't something you can just achieve overnight. It's a long and heavy process that you have to accumulate over time but it's important that you start now. If you were a bad student before then I think it's time for you to change. Remember that the steps you make don't have to be big. You just have to take you to the right direction. So that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to click the like button and hit the subscribe button down below. And if you think that I missed something, please do feel welcome to comment any suggestions and ideas which you think can help other people have high grades as well. So I'll see you on the next video.